Hello, and welcome to Startup Stories with Scaleway, where we explore cutting-edge startups around the world and how they leverage cloud computing technologies. I am your host, Ethan Pierce, and today's guest is Indiana Gregg, founder and CEO of WeDo, a new neobank empowering the creator economy. Welcome, Indiana. Hi. Hi, Ethan. It's nice to be here with you. It's uh, it's lovely. I, I uh, enjoyed our kind of pre-podcast chat, and there's some really cool stuff that's going on, and um, uh, we have some shared history as both having a, a musical life uh, back in the day and, and, and enjoying that and how that's <laughs> kind of empowered some of the stuff we do now. And um, I'm super interested in, in this creator economy approach to a neobank. So I'm, 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 I'm looking forward to all of the detail about learning about we do and what you do. To give our audience some context, um, I'd like, I always like to start with a brief kind of elevator pitch so that we better understand the context of what you do and just, you know, um, as we get into more specific questions, we understand the kind of the value proposition of, of what we do is is doing today. Absolutely. Well, um, the freelance economy is huge already, and it's projected to be half the workforce by 2025. It's already a $1.2 trillion economy in the United States alone. So the premise that we came from is how do we help freelancers um, be more efficient with their time, and their finances, and how do we help them? Where are their pain points? So in walks we do. We do is an, a neobank that helps uh, the freelancer onboard a client from A to Z, and the process is very simple. Do a contract with your client, send them an invoice to get started, bring them on a live video streaming call, like what you and I are on right now, take the payment, uh, straight into your WeDo account, we issue a debit card, and you go pay your bills. So it's really a very simple solution, but uh, we thought about it, and what is the biggest obstacle for people? You know, we know half of half the people who have a job dream of uh, being their own boss, right? Becoming a freelancer or a consultant or starting their own business. And some of the obstacles are pretty obvious. You have to pay for Zoom or you have to pay for uh, your website to be built. You have to pay to find your clients. It's pay, 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 pay. And as a neobank, we thought, well, what if we created a solution and an environment where people could do that for free? All they have to do is open an account with WeDo and on they go. And uh, there's so many talent people in the world. A lot of people have lost their jobs during COVID. And we thought, well, this might be a solution for a lot of talented people who just want to get back on the ladder or people who have a side hustle or people who have agencies or bigger freelancing businesses. But the creator economy isn't going to go away anytime soon. So that's what we do. What we do. So the, you know, there's a lot of really interesting things going on right now in, in, in the creator economy in, in terms of monetization. You know, we see you know, Clubhouse has kind of been the big um, um, buzz thing that people have been talking about a lot in the past couple of months. And, and a lot of creators have, have flocked to that to kind of uh, create an, an, another community and to be able to be closer to them through the discussion kind of format of social audio. Uh, they recently turned on um, in-app uh, tipping and payments, and they'll eventually will be doing some other things with ticketing and other things. We see Twitter has now turned that on uh, in a test uh, mode for some certain people that they can that you can tip the people that you are um, uh, that you appreciate the content that they're creating. So, tons of really interesting stuff is going on in the space of allowing creators. You know, first it was creating the platforms to help them create content. And now it seems like those platforms are 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 moving towards creating um, lots of ways to help them monetize that. It really feels like a a neo bank that kind of completes that picture, either through offering some of those platform uh, functionalities as well, or or facilitating the payment and receiving the money from these things and being able to pay that back out for bills and other things. That's a really interesting um, take on on the idea of a neo bank and 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 what people are needing specifically in that space. Uh, I think for my um, uh, one of my recent talks, so one of the things I found in my research was that uh, there are over 2 million people in the world making a six-figure income from um, the creator economy right now, uh, and that mm -hmm. is growing at a significant, significant clip. So um, there's a lot of uh, income and revenue, and, and there's a lot of economic development happening through the creator economy. 
So yeah, absolutely. Uh, the the backstory of of this. So you mentioned some of the stuff about you know why you you know about what you're doing with we do and what you're doing. Uh, we talked a bit about the backstory uh, in our pre you know kind of discussion. You know just that you come from a creative background and things like that. Is uh, I, I'm curious about the founders and the team or any interesting anecdotes on creating the company where the idea came from besides uh, what you've already kind of said. Just you know uh, how this kind of came to be. It's always fun to to learn how uh, very often personal um, uh, experiences or difficulties turn into what people want to see as the product they end up building. Uh, I'm just curious if there's more background on um, kind of how this happened and, and who all of you are that are building this this, this cool thing. Absolutely. So um, the last five years, I've been part of the creator economy as a freelancer, and I was one of those six-figure um freelancers who, you know, performed really well, um, did hours and hours of gigs on sites like Upwork and People Per Hour and Fiverr, um, and ran a digital agency through that. And the one thing I noticed uh, in terms of the pain points is these sites take very big commissions, um, and uh, you pay to play, you pay to advertise or to go uh, use like connections on, on these websites. And at the end of the day, they even charge you to deposit the money into your bank account. So, uh, and you also pay a subscription SaaS to you to use the platform for your lead gen. And I thought, well, there must be a way actually when you, once you've found your client, a way to actually work with them face to face without this clunky, let, let, I need five apps, I need, I need something to do my invoicing, I need something to, to uh, talk to them on, I need some way of like following up in my communication more easily. And then uh, obviously with, with, a, with a bank, I, you know, I would like to be able to deploy that money and not wait three to 10 days to be paid. Um, if I've completed the job, especially if it's something that these a lot of these people do this on an hourly basis. The other thing is there's a fill gap. There's a gap fill between the time that somebody um, stops a job and maybe picks up a new job. And so a lot of freelancers have inconsistencies in their time, like in terms of being able to invoice or use their time. And we thought, what if there was a system where people could pick up jobs very easily and the work could be spread across not just the bidding situation, but actually helping people fill those gaps with their skill sets. And uh, so it really came from the premise that is there a better way to help this growing workforce that we know is going to be bigger and bigger as time goes on? There simply aren't enough jobs in the world. And big industry is a lot of it's being replaced by robotics. Um, and, but there's still a lot of work to be done and a lot of people looking for people to do that work and vice versa. And so that's really the premise of where we came from. Um, so the first person who joined the team was David Jakes. And I'd worked with him on some other fintech stuff uh, in the past. And I've known him for a few years now. Um, and he was the founding CFO of PayPal. Um, and then he was also um, the, the, the treasurer of Silicon Valley Bank. So he has a lot of experience in this uh, in this industry, many, many years, uh, probably 30 years at least in the fintech industries. Um, and so he, I said, David, have a look at this. I started iterating. I started designing. I built a prototype. And I said, David, what do you think of this? And he said, I'm in. I was like, great. So um, he came on. And then I, I met a guy called Dan Coyle, who's from City, who came on. Um, and then Kirsten, who's someone I worked with for, I've known for 20, probably 25 years at least. Um, she came on to do marketing and organize the team. And we just, nobody was saying no. You know, and uh, so yeah, now we have a team of uh, varied skill sets. We have CTO, we have Cash App Shaw, who's an amazing product guy uh, from the fintech industry. He he developed ClearScore and Multiply. Um, so yeah, we just have amazing people um, working on this with with us. So uh, we're a cool team. We like to have fun. So yeah. Okay, so tell us then more about the technology uh, behind your uh, services that you're building with WeDo and, and how all of that works. Obviously, there's the NeoBank, but it sounds like you're also building some other platforming stuff in around um, online video, courses, things like that. Yeah, so we're we're building in, on microservices technology. So you can imagine this is like this is like building several apps all into one, um, and so hence 
part of the reason why we we've chosen Scaleway um, because of the various jurisdictions um, and the way you can kind of geofence uh, with Scaleway servers. Um, but yeah, so we're building. Uh, we built out basically a a wallet neo banking feature. So we have, uh, you know, debit, send payments, receive payments, peer to peer payments. Uh, we won't be introducing crypto straight away, but it's on the cards for the future. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's all sit sits within the same application. So we started with phones. So we're moving to tablets and desktops, and hopefully to televisions. So so that people can hold. You know, if you're a yoga instructor, you should be able to uh, film yourself and stream to mm -hmm. your hundred your hundred um, yoga followers and uh, live stream and sell products uh, in stream and take payments. And that's really just the ecosystem right now that we've built so far. It's very simple, not a lot of buttons, just very simple to use. Um, and then the banking side is your traditional neobank, uh, where you can hold currencies and uh, you know send payments, receive payments, and uh, balance your books and integrate with QuickBooks. So. With some of the things that we've already um, um, learned then about the functions that you're building in, we, we kind of already see how you distinguish yourself from your competition, but um, would, is there something that you'd specifically identify that really sets uh, we do apart as a neobank and, you know, as, um, as companies that have a lot of choices, but probably not creators, because th this is a very unique proposition. Um, it, it's obvious kind of why you're different, but why should companies choose we do uh, if they're looking at, at, at different uh, neobanks and kind of trying to figure out which one makes the most sense? Well, the main one is security. Um, we've developed a system that keeps your data secure so that when you're exchanging data through a ledger, uh, it's timestamp and release. So if you're a doctor talking to a, a patient and you need specific data, um, or uh, and because of the neo banking um, infrastructure already f around security, it makes it a lot easier for us to build very robust tools that keep your data secure and private and unique to you. Um, and yeah, that's part of what we're doing. It's kind of a, a part of the secret sauce and the way we'll be helping people with their privacy in terms of uh, how they leverage their own data uh, without us touching it. We're going to keep our servers empty. Uh, but a way to uh, create an ecosystem of exchange and security around you, the individual, the freelancer, and your client. Because a lot of uh, consulting and, and freelancing is you know, handling uh, delicate data. Uh, can you know if you're an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor or uh, it's not just uh, creative people who are you know branding designers or web developers that are freelancer the typical kind of thought process that uh, a freelancer is this specific type of individual these are people from all walks of life and uh, all all sorts of uh, creativity levels um, so yeah <laughs> Well, you hit on a couple interesting things there, uh, specifically then about why Scaleway, and and so you know this is uh, startup stories with Scaleway. So it's it's always interesting to understand uh, what your needs are in terms of infrastructure, and 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 I think you already touched on some interesting points that that you know with Scaleway with this idea of of European cloud sovereignty and and GDPR compliance and um, obviously the cybersecurity uh, and, and other things that that, that matter in in as as a, as a company that is building something that has a lot of regulatory compliance uh, uh, built into what it's doing, um, what are the, the the needs in terms of infrastructure? You, you've you've highlighted a couple different points of um, you know that, that that allowed you to you know make Scaleway the choice for your cloud computing provider. But are there other things, or, or what really just in general for a neo bank uh, with the platform stuff that you're adding in, uh, do you need uh, to build out the infrastructure? Yeah, it's really uh, scalability, privacy, uh, you know, uh, security, uh, the ability to use Lambda and microservices technologies, um, the way we can geofence certain countries, for example, like uh, uh, that are very, very uh, 
specifically if they're in regard to uh, GDPR, more strict, for example, Germany. Um, and, and yeah, and I think also the world needs to perhaps stop using AWS for everything, you know? Um, so supporting a company that is providing a wonderful service, but also uh, is thinking about the future and, and, and security in and, and the way that they are and not necessarily just aggregating such a huge mass of the public, but actually being more specific in the, in the types of services they offer is very attractive. So then, uh, what's next? What are the what's 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 coming? What's in the pipeline? Obviously, uh, the app. Uh, um, there's a lot of news probably about what's going to be out in the next couple of months, the next six months, next year. Uh, what what can you share? What, what what's coming for we do? Oh uh, well, first we need to get the product to launch. Um, we're in uh, kind of a product market fit phase. Um, we are raising investment soon, so we'll be opening up a, a seed round. Um, the the whole team have worked on Sweat for a year. I mean, talking 80 hour weeks with me. So uh, I do have really crazy people on this team who are willing to go the extra mile to help others help each other. And that's really the premise of we do. We're an organization, we're a company that we, we have a why as to why we're doing this. We really believe we can uh, improve millions of people's lives and put them in situations that help them uh, get back into their homes. Cause a lot of people are two paychecks away from, you know, from losing their jobs and they, they have skills, but they're living in cars in California or they may be, you know, there, there are so many stories that we've heard and uh, we believe we can help make a difference there and build this, build a, an ecosystem that works for everybody, the investor, the company, the people. And, and that's where we're we're all about. So uh, yeah, that's what we get up in the morning to do. <laughs> well, um, thank you for this discussion, Indiana. The uh, yeah, I love the mission, and obviously, this past year we've seen the creator economy significantly uh, uh, scale com compared to what we saw before. It was already amazing where things were going, but but lots of stuff has happened in the past year as people were home and and thinking of, of new ways to try and, and make money or. Or, or to build something, and, and so uh, obviously then we need a new bank uh, for all of these new businesses and new business models, so I, I love the idea of a neo bank for the creator economy. Uh, I wish you all of the best in scaling up WeDo. Uh, that's, it's, it's a fantastic idea, and, and I'm excited to see everything you've put into it and where it's going, and, and we look forward to seeing the app launch and all the good news coming uh, over the next months and year. Thank you, Ethan. It's a pleasure to, to spend this time with you, and thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Startup Stories with Scaleway. If you're a startup that uses cloud computing resources, be sure to check out Scaleway's startup program at scaleway.com. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform, and check out all of the previous episodes of the podcast. Again, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.